Good morning, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the ceremony to mark the change of commands for the Combined Air Component Command and the 7th Air Force and the change of responsibility for the Deputy Commander of United States Forces Korea. In a few moments, we will begin the ceremony in which Lieutenant General Scott L. Ployce will relinquish command to Lieutenant General David R. Iverson. Throughout the ceremony, you'll be asked to stand and be seated at appropriate times. Before we begin, please silence all electronic devices. No personal photography is allowed. Please do not take photographs with your personal devices. Today's ceremony is considered an outdoor ceremony, and as a reminder, military members not in formation should render proper customs and courtesies through the playing of ruffles and flourishes, the General's March, and the National Anthems. Civilian guests and military members not in uniform should stand and remain standing until the end of the National Anthems. The presiding officer for the Commander, Combined Air Component Command, Change of Command, and the Change of Responsibility for the Deputy Commander, United States Forces Korea, is the Commander of United Nations Command, Combined Forces Command, the United States Forces Korea, General Paul J. LaCamera. The presiding officer for the 7th Air Force Change of Command is the Deputy Commander of Pacific Air Forces, Lieutenant General James A. Jacobson. The Commander of Troops for today's ceremony is the Deputy Commander, 7th Air Force, Brigadier General Ryan P. Keeney. The music for today's ceremony is provided by the 8th Army Band and the colors will be presented by the United Nations Command Honor Guard. The change of command is a military tradition that represents a formal transfer of authority and responsibility for a unit from one officer to another. The passing of unit col colors from Lieutenant General Ployce to Lieutenant General Iverson ensures that unit and its airmen are never without official leadership, a continuation of trust, and also signifies an allegiance of airmen to their unit commander. Before we begin, I would like to take a moment and recognize our special guests. Please hold your applause until the end. The spouse of the Commander of the United States Forces Korea, Mrs. Teresa LaCamera. The spouse of the Commander of 7th Air Force, Mrs. Jennifer Ployce. The spouse of the incoming Commander, Mrs. Jenny Iverson, and their two children, Kel and Reed. The spouse of the Command Chief, 7th Air Force, Mrs. Kristen Ross. Member of the National Assembly, Hong Ki Huan. Mayor of Pyeongchang City, Zhong Zhong Sun. The Deputy Commander, Combined Force Command, General Kong Shin Chol. The former Republic of Korea, Chief of Staff of the Air Force, General Retired, Zhong Song Hua. We would additionally like to welcome all general officers, senior executives, representatives of the Alliance, civic leaders, Republic of Korea government officials, commanders, directors, senior enlisted leaders, and all other distinguished visitors from our local community. Thank you for attending today's ceremony, whether in person or joining us remotely via Facebook Live, especially Lieutenant General Iverson and Mrs. Iverson's daughter, Erin, and Lieutenant General Ployce and Mrs. Ployce's children, Jack, Jamie, and Jared. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party, the rendering of honors, the presentation of the command, the presentation of the colors, and the playing of the national anthem of the Republic of Korea and the United States of America by the 8th Army Band.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the invocation by Chaplain Galleon. For those of you who would like to bow with me in prayer, I invite you to do so now. Almighty God, thank you for this day, blessed with life and liberty. Thank you for this ceremony, which reminds us of the blessings of your providence and the strength of our Air Force and the special alliance between the United States and the Republic of Korea. Thank you for the diligence of Lieutenant General Scott Boyce in leading the 7th Air Force in its vital task of deterring aggression and maintaining armistice. Please bless him and Jennifer as they launch into a new sphere of duty and influence. I pray for Lieutenant General David Iverson as he takes command. Bless him and may he execute his new responsibilities with wisdom and courage. Please bless him and Jenny and Kel and Reed as they settle into their new home. Help all of us who serve in uniform to remain committed to the cause of freedom. May this commitment be demonstrated in our readiness and empowered by your mercy. For yours is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, United Nations Command Honor Guard, 8th Army Band, and Chaplain Galleon. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commander of United Nations Command, Combined Forces Command, and the United States Forces K Korea, General La Camera. Good morning. Anya Shimnika. General and Flag Officers, Senior Enlisted Leaders, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. One of us doesn't look like the others. Um, I'm the guy who gets less money to jump out of a perfectly good airplane. This is a special occasion for two great families, the Tri-Command and the 7th Air Force, and quite frankly, our alliance. Thank you all for joining us today. To the Honor Guard, band, and staff who put this together, bravo Zulu, thank you. And finally, to all the families here today, in person, virtually, Thank you for your attendance. I think it's early at the U.S. Air Force Academy. And hopefully your son is uh, paying attention right now, and he'll pay attention in class to later on today. Please join me in a round of applause for all those who made today possible. <laughs> Air Force General Frank Gorink once said, air power is like oxygen. When you have enough, you don't think about it, but when you don't have enough, it's the only thing you think about. The 7th Air Force is my source of dominant air power, and I'm grateful to our outgoing commander, Lieutenant General Scott rolls poise for his leadership. Rolls ensured that the 7th Air Force continued to plan and coordinate the combined warfighting support under Combined Forces Command. He hosted multilateral combined critical warfare capability training. Rolls also ensured that our annual large-scale combined and field training exercises were flawlessly executed. But most importantly, he led our airmen and airwomen with integrity and respect. Rolls, congratulations on your successful command. Godspeed to you and your family as you move on to the next adventure. We wish you health and success as you depart Korea and return to the Pentagon as the director of the Air Force staff. It's been an honor to serve with you, Jennifer, Jack, Jamie, and Jared. Teresa and I wish you all the best. To Jennifer, I know Scott has cherished the time he had with you throughout the past several years of command here in Korea. Thank you for supporting him, and thank you for all you've done personally to support our airmen and airwomen, their families, and our alliance. And as we say farewell to Lieutenant General Ployce, and as he slips back into the Shirley Bonds of Earth, 
We have another outstanding leader stepping in. To our incoming Lieutenant General David Poison Iverson, I want to welcome you, Jenny, Kel, Aaron, and Reed to our tri command. Poison, you're inheriting an exceptional team of warriors. I have no doubt you will lead them with distinction. Our mission here in Korea is to maintain the armistice, deter North Korean aggression, and if required, fight and win. Under the leadership of these two leaders, the Seventh Air Force has been and will always be ready to fight tonight and win. Thank you all again for attending this change of command. Thank you for all what you do each and every day for our alliance. Under one flag, we go together, fight tonight. Thank you, General LaCamera. Ladies and gentlemen, the Deputy Commander of Pacific Air Forces, Lieutenant General Jacobson. Good morning. On behalf of General Willisbach, Commander of Pacific Air Forces, An Yun Ha Sayo. To our distinguished guests, our Korean teammates, our joint teammates, and the airmen and families of 7th Air Force, welcome and thank you. General LaCamera, thank you for your leadership, vision, and exceptional work to advance this immensely strategic ROC-US partnership. Two flags will exchange hands today. One is 7th Air Force. When General Baisley directed the stand-up of a numbered Air Force in Korea in 1986, he did it because of the importance of the ROC-US alliance. To highlight that importance, he brought back the oldest numbered Air Force in the United States Air Force, Seventh Air Force, with a legacy stretching back to November 1940 with its origins in Hawaii and the precursor for today's Pacific Air Forces. Through Seventh Air Force, the United States Air Force and the ROCAF live and breathe Kachikapshida. We fly from the same airfields, we fly side by side in F-16s, and we sit side by side in the Air Operations Center, and we trace our partnership back 70 years as we defend the Republic of Korea's freedom. One exceptional family. As we convene today, though, we must first thank two families. While actions in Washington delayed this event for months, the readiness of 7th Air Force to fight tonight continued unabated. But what was impacted were families, including these two, led by two exceptional ladies, Jennifer and Jenny. Jennifer, you are the longest serving First Lady of 7th Air Force, a title you did not seek but one you wore with exceptional distinction. Thank you so much for your extraordinary service these past three plus years to the airmen and families of 7th Air Force. Jenny, you too bore the delays of Washington in an exemplary way. A superb teammate with us at Pacific Air Forces headquarters, you endured the unknown, keeping family and children focused and moving forward. Thank you. We have every confidence you will take up the standard of 7th Air Force's families and lead well. <laughs> to our commanders on stage, First Lieutenant General Ployce rolls. You now also hold a unique title as the longest serving 7th Air Force commander ever. Thanks for serving beyond the norm and doing it so well, literally from COVID to today, you led the way. The first strategic bomber to land on the peninsula in over three decades. The first trilateral air response to an intercontinental ballistic missile the first MQ-9 to ever operate in the Korean theater of operations, the creation of a new Space Force component, 
and you develop the most realistic counter ballistic missile field training exercise in the United States Air Force. Then you forged unprecedented seventh Air Force support to the broader Indo-Pacific, ensuring a free and open Indo-Pacific, flying with our allies and partners from Thailand to Malaysia, to Singapore, to Indonesia, to the Philippines, and delivering the first A-10s to Vietnam ever. Roles, absolutely brilliant leadership and stunning accomplishments. On behalf of General Wilsbach, thank you. We wish you and Jennifer all the best as you jet off to the Pentagon to take over as the Air Force's Director of Staff arguably the most challenging and essential three-star job we have. Thank you and job well done. Now to Poison, General Iverson. He has the toughest transition of all. He has two legacies to follow, both that of General Ployce and that of General Iverson. Why? Let me take you back 30 years to December of 1994. Peninsula tensions were high. Two U.S. Senators flew to Pyongyang aboard a U.S. Air Force aircraft, the first time one had crossed into North Korean airspace since the Korean War. The airman responsible for the mission that day was the new 7th Air Force commander, Lieutenant General Ronald Iverson, Poison's father. To all present today, to the Alliance to 7th Air Force, your newest commander is born from a legacy of excellence in Korea. And over the past two years, Poison has taken time to know the Indo-Pacific, having served as the PACAF's Director of Operations. There he forged the groundbreaking operational approach to buttress the free and open Indo-Pacific. He's a strategic thinker with a brilliant mind. He is a battle-tested warrior at every level, whether that be with 1,500 combat hours in an F-15E, commanding two separate wings, and commanding the 609th Air Operations Center in Qatar, he has what it takes to be ready to fight tonight. Poison, you are the right airman at the right time to advance our alliance in 7th Air Force. We wish you all the best. Enjoy the journey. Continue the Iverson legacy and lead well. Thank you to all. Kachi kapshida. Thank you, Lieutenant General Jacobson. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the Defense Distinguished Service Medal to Lieutenant General Ployce by General LaCamera. Attention to orders. Lieutenant General Scott L. Ployce, United States Air Force, distinguished himself by exceptionally meritorious service in a duty of great responsibility as the Deputy Commander, United States Forces Korea, Commander, Air Component Command, United Nations Command, Commander, Combined Air Component Command, Combined Forces Command, Commander, 7th Air Force, Air Forces Korea, and the United States Representative to the United States Republic of Korea Status of Forces Agreement Joint Committee from June 2020 to January 2024. During this period, he demonstrated extraordinary leadership and dedication exemplified by his innumerable contributions to service members, Department of Defense civilians, and their families. His strategic vision and mastery of diplomatic and interagency skills made lasting positive impacts on the command and the United States Republic of Korea Alliance. General Ployce's superior leadership significantly increased the readiness and capabilities of the combined and joint air and air defense forces on the Korean Peninsula during a period of increased political tensions and heightened health protect protection conditions due to the coronavirus pandemic. His tireless efforts to improve the military forces of the United States and Republic of Korea contributed directly to strengthening the strategically vital alliance. 
the distinctive accomplishments of General Ployce reflect great credit upon himself, the United States Air Force, and the Department of Defense. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commander of 7th Air Force, Lieutenant General Ployce. Greetings, everyone. Anyang Hashimnika, thank you all for joining us today. Let's rewind back to June of 2020. Jennifer and I arrived during the height of COVID, starting this command journey out with a virtual change of command, trapped in quarantine and attending from the far side of a Zoom television screen. It excites me to actually be here with you today in person, surrounded by key stakeholders and leaders that drive the Rock US Alliance. The last three and a half years have been our assignment of choice enjoying the rich culture, the delicious cuisine, and serving alongside the friendship of the Korean people, we cannot thank you enough. To General Camera and Teresa, thank you for your leadership, your joint focus, decisive decision-making, and commitment to balancing the mission and people. This enabled the defense and freedoms of 51 million people across the Republic of Korea. Lieutenant General Jacobson, Jake, thank you for representing the men and women of Pacific Air Forces. You and General Wilsbach's guidance, leadership, and trust has enhanced our ability to produce air superiority across the ever-important Indo-Pacific AOR. To my combined Air Component Command teammates, Lieutenant General Kim and Ms. Gu, thank you for both your hospitality and your teamwork. I look forward to hearing the success of CACC as you enter another exercise season while responding to real-world provocations. I have full trust and confidence in your team's ability to maintain the 71-year armistice and, if required, fight tonight. To my fellow component commanders, senior enlisted leaders, and distinguished guests, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for your leadership. On behalf of the Alliance, it has been my honor to serve alongside of you. While this is my third assignment to Korea, I can confidently say the mission here is like no other. Throughout seven decades of hard work and dedication, the service members of the Tri-Command stand ready to deter aggression and, if required, defend the Republic of Korea, which I know we will succeed. Over the past three and a half years, I've been honored to see the successes of our joint combined and interagency success. We've maintained a fight tonight posture throughout the protocols of a worldwide pandemic. We strengthened extended deterrence alongside our ROC counterparts, driving a free and open Indo-Pacific. And we increased lethality throughout multiple iterations of Freedom Shield. These accomplishments would not be possible without the exceptional effort and innovative problem-solving capabilities of this alliance. Moving on to my motivators, Jamie, Jack, and Jared. While you could not be here today, and while we have spent the last few years thousands of miles apart, Watching each of you chart your own path into the Air Force has been the greatest highlight of my life. I could not be more proud of the three of you and look forward to your success while wearing our nation's cloth. Finally, to my best friend and college sweetheart, Jen. I cannot thank you enough for being my co-pilot for 34 years. We've done 19 moves together, and it has not been easy. But with each new location, I know we have the adventures that lie ahead and thank you for always being my rock. After three years, seven months, and 19 days, it is my distinct honor to pass the guide on to Lieutenant General Iverson. Poison, Jenny, Kel, Aaron, and Reed. 
I trust you will take the Ironclad Alliance to the next level and look forward to seeing your success from inside of the Pentagon. As we get ready to depart Korea later this afternoon, please know that Jennifer and I are honored and so thankful to be a small part of the history of this great nation. We go together, kachi kapshi da, kam samni da. Thank you, Lieutenant General Ployce. The men and women of the Combined Air Component Command and 7th Air Force would like to honor you with a final salute. United States Forces Korea is a military force that reflects the mutual commitment of re the Republic of Korea and the United States to maintain peace and security, capable of deterring external aggression and defending the Korean Peninsula while strengthening the Republic of Korea and the United States Alliance. The Combined Air Component Command is the combined and joint forces of the Republic of Korea and the United States military organizations. It provides the strong air power arm of Combined Forces Command. The 7th Air Force Commander is also the commander of the Combined Air Component Command and, as such, reports to General Le Camera in his role as the commander of Combined Forces Command. In order for there to be a seamless transfer of responsibility and command, General Le Camera will relinquish responsibility of the United States Forces Korea Deputy Commander. He will also pass the Combined Air Component Command flag from Lieutenant General Ployce to Lieutenant General Iverson to represent the change of leadership. For both changes of command, the 7th Air Force Command Chief, Chief Master Sergeant Ross, will be the flag bearer. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand by the direction of General Le Camera. The responsibility of United States Forces Korea Deputy Commander is transferred from Lieutenant General Ployce to Lieutenant General Iverson. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as Gen General Le Camera transfers the combined Air Component Command flag from Lieutenant General Ployce to Lieutenant General Iverson. Attention to orders. By the direction of General Le Camera, Lieutenant General Iverson assumes responsibilities of Combined Air Component Command, Combined Forces Command, Republic of Korea. Attention to orders. By the direction of General Kenneth S. Wilsbach, 
Lieutenant General Iverson assumes command of 7th Air Force, effective 30 January 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of co the Combined Air Component Command, 7th Air Force, and Deputy Commander, United States Forces Korea, Lieutenant General Iverson. Well, good morning. Thank you to distinguished visitors, commanders, chiefs, honored Korean guests, fellow airmen and joint partners for being with us here today to honor General Ploys and Jennifer's outstanding service and for welcoming Jenny, me, and our family. It's been a whirlwind 24 hours since we left Honolulu and it's just a little bit colder here than when we uh, departed. So it's gonna take us a bit to get uh, adjusted. General Camera, sir, thank you for your trust in hiring me for this position and for your leadership sustaining our alliance. I look forward to working for you and serving the U.S. Forces Korea team. I also want to thank General Wilsbach for trusting me to lead our airmen here on the peninsula. It's been a privilege to work for him over the past three years. He taught me a lot about leading at a strategic level, building relationships, and taking care of our people. Jake, thanks for being here today. I know you flew all this way for about 48 hours. You're gonna turn right back around and fly straight into a 10-day exercise. <laughs> Thank you for your leadership, your mentorship, and your friendship for the past two years. Your door was always open for all of us to bounce ideas off of and to give us advice. You made the entire PACAF team better. And of course, the master's class in sarcasm was always appreciated every single day. I look forward to staying connected Good luck to you and Nancy in your next chapter. Rolls, thank you to you and Jennifer for your leadership here in Korea for the last four years. The mood, morale, professionalism of the airmen and families on the peninsula is unmatched. It's clear that the two of you and your dedication to the mission and people led 7th Air Force to new heights. You guys are a hard act to follow. We will do our best to live up to the standards you set and strive to continue your outstanding service and leadership. Finally and most importantly, thank you to my family for your dedication and sacrifice serving our nation. Jenny, without you we would not be here. You're the anchor point of our family and always make every place you go better through your compassion and caring for people. I love you. We have two uh, criers in the front row here. That's all I'm gonna say today. Keller and Reed, one more adventure, an opportunity to travel and learn about the world. I know moving is never easy. Thank you for helping us do this yet again. I'm so proud of each of you and who you are. I love you guys. And our daughter Erin's not here. She's in school in Manhattan and she's watching online. So toot toot, now go back and start studying because uh, you were paying enough money for that. Thank you to our parents for the example you and the high standards you've always given us. Serving a higher purpose has been instilled in each of us our entire life. We also would not be here without your love and guidance. I've been to the Republic of Korea many times during my career, and we are excited to now be here full time. The best parts of living here are the intense friendships, the commitment we have to the Alliance, and the 24-7 focus on Fight Tonight mission 
in order to protect the people of the Republic of Korea and the United States. Our steadfast dedication, forged in a shared sacrifice, has built a common bond between us and led to those deep and lasting friendships. Serving here, standing beside all of you, protecting the freedom and democracy of our nations is truly an honor. It's a privilege for us to serve the Airmen of 7th Air Force, our joint partners, and our Korean allies. We can't wait to get started. Thank you for being here today. Kapshi kapshi da. Thank you, Lieutenant General Iverson. The men and women of the Combined Air Component Command and 7th Air Force will now honor Lieutenant General Iverson with his first salute as their commander. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the Air Force song and the departure of the official party. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. The command thanks you for joining us today for this special event, and thank you to the countless volunteers that made this ceremony to happen today. Please remain in place until the formation has been dismissed. Bus transportation will pick up outside the hangar as you exit, and if you are issued a handset, please leave it on your seat as you, as you leave. Thank you.